Hi, my name is Tiani and welcome back to another video. I have lost 85 pounds and have kept it off for one year now. If you're someone who just recently lost a lot of weight and you need tips on how to keep it off, this is a video for you. So what I will say is make sure you check out my 80 pound weight loss video so you can see how I lost the weight and make sure you subscribe and hit that like button below. But the way you keep your weight off is basically the way you got it off. I'm not saying like doing vigorous exercises every single day or anything like that, but the habits that you built over time when you were losing the weight, those are the habits that you need to sustain while maintaining your weight as well. So for example, I've been maintaining my weight now for a year and I usually go to the gym about five days a week minimum. So I weight lift five days a week. I also do cardio as well. Since I built those habits over time, it's easier for me to have that consistent workout routine because that's what I built over time. Now, initially in the beginning, that was extremely hard because it was something I wasn't used to. My body was a lot bigger, a lot heavier. I had a lot more fat on my body. Therefore, back then, I didn't even have the mindset or anything like that. So it was a lot harder for me to stay consistent with a fitness routine on that caliber. So now that I've built those habits over time, I stick with my fitness routine. I also made it a lifestyle. So it's working out is a part of my day now. So a few of my habits that I've kept since the beginning now is I work out in the early morning. Now, I know some of you are probably like, I am not an early morning bird or anything like that. And I'm not telling you to become I'm an early morning person at all. And honestly, I wasn't a 4 a.m. girly at all either. However, what I noticed that having an early morning fitness routine, it allowed me more time in the day to spend time with my family. I am a mom, I am a wife, and I also work a nine to five job. I have other things I need to do. I also create content. So having an early morning fitness routine allowed me to do all the things that I love to do. And basically I got my workout out of the way. I don't have to figure out where do I need to fit in my workout. I don't have to pencil in like, oh, let me get my workout in at three o'clock. Like, I don't have to worry about it because when I wake up, the workout is already done. I don't have to worry about that. So it just allowed me to have more time in the day just to do other things that I love. So that's a habit that I've been maintaining and I don't think I'll ever change my fitness routine to a consistent nightly routine just because of how busy my schedule is. And also it helped me reach my step goals faster. Currently my step goals is 10,000 steps a day. Now I know that sounds crazy. You don't have to do 10,000 steps a day. That is my my personal goal that I made for myself. And initially in the beginning of my journey, I did not have a 10,000 step goal at all. I could barely take 2,000 steps, okay? Especially being at 240 plus pounds, I could barely take 2,000 steps. However, I noticed when waking up early in the morning, I'm able to hit my 10,000 steps probably by like 10 o'clock, which is crazy because I weight lift and then I usually do 45 minute cardio right after. So by the time I'm done with both of my sessions, I'm at about 7,500 steps. And then if I'm at home working, usually I walk around the apartment apartment or I'm cleaning up on my lunch breaks or I take the dog for a walk on my break. That's how I get my 10,000 steps a day. And then if say if it's an off day for me, okay, say I wake up early in the morning, but I don't work out. So I get my steps in either by cleaning the house, running after my kid, walking the dog. It just allows me more time to hit my 10,000 step goal. Also, my nine to five job is very sedentary. So I am at a desk all day, meaning I need to hit that 10,000 step goal every day. Because I sit down at a desk all day, I'm not really burning as many calories as I could. A lot of people feel like when they work out at the gym, like, yeah, you're burning all these calories. But if you have a job where you're sitting at a desk all day, you're not burning as many calories as you think. So hitting my 10,000 step goal uh, has allowed me to, for one, burn a little bit more calories on top of my workout, which is great. And it allows me to move my body a lot more than what I normally would. And then it also allows me to eat a little bit more. There's that. Also, another thing that I'm doing to the weight off is that I do cardio five days a week. I do usually 45 minutes of cardio following my following my weightlifting. So I'll do my weightlifting and then I'll do the 45 minutes of cardio right after weightlifting. Now, you don't have to do all this cardio, especially if it's not like you really have to know what works for you. I just noticed with me with the cardio, it was a mood booster. It helped with my endurance. It helped me last longer during exercises. I also do a boot camp sometimes at, at night every now and then. And I noticed that it does help me keep up with those type of exercises. And then I also noticed that it gave my physique just a different type of look. I don't know if you all follow me on Instagram. I do 
upload a lot of transformation videos and you will see like in my older transformation videos how my body looks and then how it looks now when I incorporate it more cardio along with the weightlifting. I noticed that my body was shedding more fat. So I, was, I was definitely losing a lot of fat at that time and you can see my abs now, which is great, my top abs. <laughs> but I do notice that there was a difference with the cardio and then I'm also noticing that with maintaining my progress this far, like it, uh, some people complain that too much cardio gives them like a flabby, less toned look. And in my experience with weightlifting and doing cardio at the same time, and plus with the amount of food that I'm eating, it has helped me maintain my physique and then it has helped my physique even look better. So another thing that's helping me maintain my progress is food swaps, guys. I talk about this in so many different videos. I talk about, I think one of the videos that I had either, I don't know if it was like the creator routine that you can sustain, like create, how to create a fitness routine that you can stick to. I believe it was that video where I talk about how I made a quote unquote pizza. <laughs> I made a pizza because I love pizza. That's one of my favorite foods. I'm a child. I love pizza and I make a healthier version of pizza with less calories. So knowing how to swap your foods will be a game changer because sometimes, I mean, don't get me wrong, don't restrict foods. I don't restrict foods. I eat what I want. However, when you start eating with you what you want and access, like of course the weight is going to come back on. So I try not to like overdo it or overindulge from eating like all this heavy food five, six days a week because yeah, over time I'm gonna gain that weight back. However, I make healthy swaps such as the pizza example. I also try to like, cause I have really sweet craving. So I've been buying more protein bars, especially when my period comes. I have a lot of cravings when my period comes and it's really hard to stay on track during that time. So I do allow myself like treat here and there, but I try to get like certain protein bars that I know taste like candy or I try to make like alternatives. Like there's this, um, like this peanut butter banana bar that I made uh, with yogurt, peanut butter, and a little bit of jelly. So it's like something that's just like a swap for better options. So you can stay on track. Another thing is finding similar foods that are your favorite, either with less calories. What I usually look for in similar foods is foods that are higher in protein, have less calories and less fat in them. So for example, sometimes like, like a lot of the fatty foods are usually high carb, high fat. So I try to look for something that potentially lower in carb, a little bit lower in fat and higher in protein, but are still satiating enough for me to, for, to entice me to want it, <laughs> if that makes any sense. But finding similarities in your favorite is what's gonna be key to maintaining your weight and maintaining your progress. Another thing is a lot of people like to really rely on motivation. Motivation comes and goes. And I'm gonna say this so many times because you're not always gonna be motivated to go to the gym. However, on those days, I do it anyway because I know it's just my mind like, all right, well, you don't wanna do this. You don't feel like doing it. Like it's literally your body fighting against yourself. So what I will say is over time, the motivation kind of goes out the window. You truly have to rely on discipline. And so many people have said like, you have to rely on discipline. And it's hard to explain the word discipline. And I didn't understand it until I had days, weeks, months where I was just like irritated going into the gym. And I had to literally fight my emotions, fight my attitude. I had to talk to myself and be like, all right, this is what you want. You can't get what you want if you don't do the work. You can't get what you want if you're sitting on a couch. You can't get what you want. You can't get what you want if you keep making these choices that get that basically get you further from your goal. And when you start seeing progress and when you start seeing yourself in the mirror and all that, oftentimes you're going to want to stick to your goals more often than not. And that's where discipline comes in. Discipline and consistency. Most people, when they hit their end goal, they completely stop all the habits that they built over the time to get the weight off and start going back to old weights. And that's where you gain the weight back. And it's so unfortunate because people are like, I don't know how I gained the weight back. Okay, what were you doing when you were getting the weight off? Those are the things that you need to continuously keep doing. And I think a lot of people miss the mark on that because they think like there's gonna be an end goal to your fitness journey. And unfortunately, there's no end goal. You have to make this a lifestyle. You wanna sustain your progress, period. Like you, you wanna sustain your progress. Keep doing all the things that you built over time to sustain that progress. You don't have to keep yo-yoing and going back and forth and gaining the weight and losing the weight, gaining the weight and losing the weight 
days, you have to stay consistent. I don't care if consistency looks like three days for you, four days for you, five days for you. Shoot, two days. Some people only have time for two days. Remain consistent, remain disciplined, and make sure you keep your eye on your goals. If you need to write down your goals, hit it on the mirror that you look into every single day. Keep reminding yourself where you want to be, and that's gonna set you apart from most people who always gain the weight back. I make these videos because I had so, like I had such a hard time losing this weight, guys. I had such a hard time. I struggled with my weight since I was 10 years old, all the way up into my 30s. I struggled with mental health, I had trauma. Like there's just so many things and so many barriers that I had to go through to get the weight off. And I know there's some people out there like who are dealing with similarities in this aspect. And I just want you to know, yeah, it's not easy by any means. However, it is doable. And that's why I make these videos so you all can stay encouraged and stay, stay motivated. <laughs> but you guys can stay encouraged, stay motivated, and stay consistent. Like that's all I want people to grasp from this channel. So if this is a video that you love, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like button below and I'll see you in the next. Bye.